All right, welcome to the LA Soccer Hub Show. My name is Jill Garcia. Today is Mo Monday, March 1st. Um, you know, March came up at us quick. I was just in February. Um, but today we're talking LA Galaxy. And here to help me talk LA Galaxy, we've got the one, the only, Alicia Rodriguez. Alicia, how you doing? Doing well, Gio. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, LA Galaxy press call, like we were talking pre-chat, we only had one team to cover, you know, we're used to going back and forth from both LA teams, but it was good just to, you know, only talk LA Galaxy uh, today, only cover them today and not have to back and forth, go back and forth and juggle between screens and seeing what each player and coach had to say from each team. So I hope it's like this. I, you know, obviously, I don't know if their interest is to help it, make it easier, but I know they, they got training schedules as well, but it felt good. You know, it felt good to, to only be in a press call today. What about you? Yeah, it was exciting. You know, I think um, if we can't get out to the training sessions, you know, you don't get the same sort of excitement, but I think even so there was a little bit of that buzz today and, and things really ramping up and um, you know, we've had a really long off season, so it, it's pretty exciting to, get back into it a little bit and uh yeah like you said have have one team to uh dip our toes in with today yeah and i, and I hope moving forward i i know like nothing's like uh like actually being there but i think now in this new uh day and age that we live off of zoom i i hope you know that they still have these i, I hope that they, they they still have these you know for the for the people that are, the, the people that aren't able to make it to to the press calls i mean excuse me to the to the practices um, because I think it, it's going to be, uh, I think it should just be added. And for whatever reason, if you're not able to go, you can just hop on a zoom call and it makes it easier that way. Um, instead of driving, trying to fight the traffic, you know, in LA, um, obviously nothing's like being there live, but I think this will, you know, help us connect, help, help us cover the team a lot more efficiently. And, you know, especially some of us, I got so many things going on. Um, what are, what are your thoughts on about, about that pushing the teams and motivating them to still have zoom even after this pandemic, whenever it ends, you know? Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm a working mom. Uh, so I have a kid in school. I can't just jaunt off to training sessions and stuff, uh, you know, at the drop of a hat. Um, you know, my, my time is, is really conscripted. And so, yeah, having these Zoom calls is really important for me because it helps me connect to the teams and get to ask questions sometimes and, um, you know, talk to players and coaches uh, on occasion. And um, so, yeah, I definitely want, I hope that they stick around um, in some capacity, both uh, during the week and, and hopefully after games as well. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you know, going to push for it. You know, hopefully, hopefully this is a new normal and add it on, you know, so it's uh uh, I'm excited for it. So hopefully they, they stick with it. But like you said earlier, you know, there was a lot of excitement today um, with the Galaxy press call. You, you can just feel it. Uh, obviously, Greg Vanu uh, spoke today. Uh, Jonathan Dos Santos also spoke and then, you know, finished off with Sebastian Legette. Um, I was a little surprised that Chicharito did not speak uh, on the first day of, of preseason. Obviously, he's your, he's your biggest star. So, I, I you know, Whatever the reason, I think you want. I think I would want him to speak the first day, um, and I, I thought that was the only thing uh, that was interesting. But I, overall, great press call. Um, you know, Greg Vanny talked about you know the future. Talked about adding a couple more players. Jonathan Santos, you know, briefly talked about you know obviously being in his final year, and then Sebastian Leger also talked about you know his 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 you know being in the national team and playing for the LA Galaxy. Obviously, we'll, we'll break everything down. But what was your overall thought of the whole press conference? Yeah, we covered uh, quite a bit of stuff. I think uh, sometimes when you get into uh, opening day, you know, the questions are pretty general for a reason. You know, there's no game coming up. So you're sort of like, hey, how do you feel? How's it going? But I think because um, Vanny's new, uh, you know, there was definitely stuff to talk about there. And then with the players, they're both coming back. But in particular with uh, Dos Santos, he... Uh, he struggled last year. So to have him, um, you know, kind of own up to that in front of a group of reporters, I know it, that uh, Kevin Baxter had reported um, a profile on him uh, about a week ago, you know, going over that stuff, but for him to kind of reiterate, yeah, I had a bad season last year, but I'm back. And, you know, I really want to make it right this time. You know, there was plenty to talk about. So um, yeah, I, th I thought it was a, you know, pretty good availability today. Yeah. 
Um, you know, I, I really liked how Greg Vanny really addressed the media. He answered every question that was asked. Um, he didn't dodge anything. And I think, you know, from his uh, when he was introduced to now, I, I, you know, I think it's definitely a different vibe, obviously, from last year to this year. And I think, you know, the sense that I get, you know, is we can ask him anything, you know, respectively straightforward and he's, he's willing to, he's willing to answer. Uh, and I think that's always, um, and he doesn't seem like he's bothered by any question, you know? Um, and I think that that always, always makes the job of us media talking and asking questions and trying to, you know, sometimes trying to dig what's actually going on. Um, you know, he kind of just put it out there and, and, and you know, and let us know what was going on. And I think just having that communication, I can kind of assume how the season will be uh, covering Greg Vanny and the LA Galaxy this season. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good start. I think he's somebody who's uh, typically, you know, in MLS, he's been pretty candid um, and, you know, doesn't shy away from answers. But obviously, we're going to have to see how it is. I mean, if, you know, if they got, get off to a terrible start, then maybe he won't be quite as forthcoming. But um, I also have hopes and expectations that they're not going to get off to a, an awful start, but you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And I, I think another thing that he mentioned, um, you know, he said, he mentioned everybody came, came in shape, right. Everybody was ready training in shape. And that that's always, that's always a positive, right. When you, when your player, when your coach talks about your players, that tells you that uh, we've known what Chicharito has been doing. And we've seen some of the stuff from, you know, Jonathan Dos Santos, you know, Sebastian Leggett is, is not a surprising because he's been training with the U S men's national team. For, but for him to say that, you know, majority of the guys came in fit, came in ready, that's a, that's another positive because all you got to do is just now, if everybody's in shape, uh, everybody just got to get in the same rhythm um, with practices, you know, getting to know each other. I don't know if you saw a, a little of the, uh, they sent the, the link of the, of the pre of the B-roll of the, of the practices. And, and I look exciting, you know, just to, just to see Chicharito, just to see Jonathan Dos Santos and just to see the other players, obviously Jonathan Bond, one of, one of the newer players there, I think, those things make it exciting. You're starting to see the new faces, right? It's like the the first day, the first day of school, right? You know, everybody's coming. All right, we know so and so. All right, now let's get together and you know, let's work things out. Yeah, I think, like you said, you know, it is impressive to hear that the players have come in in shape. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago where I, I think it was not necessarily an expectation for players to show up in camp. You know, in, in reasonable shape. I think that's a pretty new phenomenon with coaches kind of pushing uh, players to, you know, like start off on the right foot, like don't come in, you know, overweight and not having run a mile since, you know, we, we ended the season, like you, you got to have some sort of baseline of fitness. And um, it seems like more and more guys are, are taking that to heart and are doing a better job of, of staying fit. So um, that should help when they get into doing games and stuff and really getting into the bulk of the preseason. And then that should hopefully help when they get into the season where they won't be playing catch up. They won't, you know, hopefully there'll be fewer muscle injuries that muscle injuries were a problem the last couple of years, frankly, uh, for this team. So hopefully all that, um, the fact that they're in shape, hopefully they'll have a training program that is, uh, reasonable for the players and, and doesn't um, overtax them. And, and then hopefully they'll, you know, be able to press on right away. Cause one of the things that happens every season in MLS is there's one or two teams that show up, they start the season and you can tell they're still out of shape and they look terrible. Like it's, it's really apparent when you see those teams that just cannot keep up for 90 minutes, like at all. Um, and obviously the galaxy don't want to be it <laughs> basically. Yeah, no, not 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 especially after what happened last year, right? So definitely can't have another season like that. And just with all the emotion, right? Just like I even talked about, you know, I asked Greg Randy about, you know, the jerseys that were launched last week. You know, there's there's just so much excitement, right? So, and and it's good that for him for for him to say that the players came in shape and you know every you know the ball is rolling pretty smoothly. Obviously, the start of the season. Obviously, once games get in, preseason games and everything get in, I think they're going to start to be uh, – you're actually going to start to see the team. Um, you know, but one of the things he, he mentioned, he mentioned adding about six to eight players. Uh, I know currently they have about 25 players on the roster. Um, and I think you're going to have a, a, up to 30. I know we talked about Precha about the wiggle room. Um, what, what do you make of his thoughts of, you know, adding more depth to the team with already 25 players on the roster? Uh, I thought that was pretty significant. I think that was one of the biggest uh, news items that came out of uh, Vanny's availability was that he said the team is aiming to add six to eight players. He also said that uh, several, 
you know, some undetermined number, they were waiting on visas. So that presumes that those are international players, you know, at least some of them are international players. And also he said that they are gonna be using TAM uh, because that's what they have available as far as their funds. So um, obviously you can chop and change TAM a little bit, but I, I don't expect they're gonna be getting minimum salary guys on TAM. They're gonna be getting guys who are at a, a decent level. I think also what was uh, striking was the profile of the players that he mentioned. Um, obviously, basically this off season for the most part, they've signed mostly homegrowns. Um, and he said that they needed to add players kind of in the peak of their career who had some experience and also players that they were expecting to stick around for a while. So they wanted to have players who had some experience, but they you know, are hoping are gonna be on the squad for five years, um, which, makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, good teams have stability, but also, um, you know, the galaxy haven't had that. They haven't had that for, you know, since Bruce arena left, basically they've had a lot of churn on their roster. So it's obvious, but it makes sense. And I think the fact that, uh, Vanny kind of spelled that out, I think was actually pretty significant because, um, Guillermo Barros Goloto never spelled anything like that out. It was more like, Oh, we need to get better players. And then they continually struggle to get better players, but, for Vanny, it was pretty pinpoint. You know, we need uh, impact players to be part of a core moving forward, um, and they need to be guys who fit this particular profile. So for me, I think that's uh, a great sign, and I think it means that the team expects to be pretty busy in the coming weeks and, and maybe months. Yeah, I think, and also, right, if you add more players, you can, you can add more competition. And mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, that increases the level of competition within, within your squad, right? It makes you feel, obviously, we know who the stars are. We know we know who the superstars are. But those, the, the, the spots are going to, you know, that we don't know, right? We there, There's a couple, you know, we can name maybe a handful of spots that we don't know who's going to, is actually going to be the starter. And I think those are the ones that, you know, you want competition at because you want the best player any given day to start for you. And I think adding more of those players where if they're international or you know wherever they're coming from i think that's gonna you know increase um increase the squad increase the competition i just want to here, here's a quote that greg vanny said about the six to eight players he's like i think we are between six and eight players left to add to this group we're looking for a very specific qualities to fit into the group that we believe can help us take us to the next uh, take us to the next level that we need to be at, you know, it's already setting the expectations right there. And that, that's what you want, right? That, that's what you want on your first day. Hey, just because we have 25 players, only 11 play, we're still going to add more, more players to the squad. And, and, and it just adds in. I'm, I'm like, okay, when he said that, I was like, 30 man roster, let's do it. You know, <laughs> you know, let, let's do it. Let, let's increase the competition. And, and I think, you know, when you're there, like galaxy, obviously we, we know, the history and everything, but I think, you know, Greg Vanny is, is someone who's going to hold this team accountable, hold them up to the badge and what, you know, with all the fans, you know, have been talking about, have been, you know, representing the team. And I think him knowing that and understanding that playing for a team, not being the coach and, you know, coming full circle, uh, I think we may see the best Greg Vanny as head coach with the LA Galaxy. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think he had a really good track record in building a successful team in Toronto and, um, so far, he's saying the right things. Um, again, I mean, we're at the very beginning of the journey, but he has the track record. So I think you can give him the benefit of the doubt to start with. And there are some pieces here, like you said, that um, you know are going to be playing. Um, and then beyond that, it's a matter of finding the rest of them, finding the right system for these players. And uh, Vanny has a track record of doing that already with a team that was far more of a basket case than <laughs> even the Galaxy. So um, yeah, I mean, I have high expectations, but I think he's uh, one of the few managers that I would say, yeah, I, I definitely think he can do it. No, you know, no problem. Like this is a big, a big uh, task, but he is someone who, you know, I think he, he's proven he can do it. So now he's got to go do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And I think, uh, uh, you know, I, I even asked him about like Chicharito because I, I obviously that that is the biggest question, right? Everything he's been posting, and, and that's why I also said it, it was interesting for that he wasn't on the on the press call. Um, you know, because we've been seeing nothing but positive. I've been you know saying nothing but positive things about Chicharito this this season. Um, you know, I asked Greg Vanny if he would share some of those conversations, and he, he pretty much just said that everything. I'm paraphrasing here that you know all the conversations with him and Chicharito have been positive. He's been a great communicator. He's been a great leader. Uh, he's also, he also mentioned, you know, how him 
uh, Chicharito and Jonathan Dos Santos lead. Uh, obviously, Jonathan, Jonathan Dos Santos being the veteran, Chicharito, you know, playing with Jonathan, Jonathan Dos Santos and the Mexican team. So, you know, we get he gets to get have a more of a sense uh, for him. And I think now it's just to see, OK, how is he, he's going to fit in? How are you going to get the balls into Chicharito? How uh, you know, you're going to make him more explosive. I think, obviously, you still need to add another, maybe another striker, another forward, uh, pair up with them. Obviously, we're still trying to figure out uh, Christian Pavone's situation. We'll, we'll get into that. Um, but but what do you make of uh, Greg Vanny, uh, you know, talking about Chicharito and, and the, the positives that, he's, that he mentioned about him? Yeah, I think it's uh, – you kind of mentioned it. You know, there's there's two elements to having success with, with Chicharito. Number one is he has to be in the right frame of mind and be in good form – it seems like he's getting serious and um, he's been working on his fitness in the off season. Um, if he's in the right frame of mind, then that's half the battle. The other half is making sure that you put the right players and system in place uh, to get the most out of him. We know last year that that did not happen for Chicharito. And so I think that that compounded the problems that he had um, just because there was, you know, he was expected to kind of be on an Island and, you know, have these aerial balls lofted in over the top and, opposing defenses, you know, knew what to do. They were always cutting those out before he could even get to them. So um, if Vanny can get the right system to actually get something out of him, which I I'm confident he can do, then I think, you know, they'll make a good team. Basically. I think they can both succeed, um, you know, off of each other. Um, they definitely need some help in attack. Uh, obviously they're still pursuing uh, Pavone Um they likely need another winger. Uh, they never really solved that problem last year. And um, I'm not sure if Sebastian Legette is going to be playing as an attacker. Um, I'd like to see him as an attacker. I think he had a, a pretty good season under the circumstances last year. Um, but most of the time with the Galaxy, he's been playing deeper in midfield. Um, they really do need to fill out their midfield unless they're going to go super young this, this season. So there's a decent chance that uh, Leggett will have to play midfield, but I would like him unless they find somebody better, um, which is possible. I would like him to be playing in an attacking role um, and then having somebody else coming in, in the midfield, but. Like, uh, do you, do, are you saying uh, like alongside Chicharito to play, play up top alongside Chicharito or just, or just underneath Chicharito? Um, I think, I don't think Vanny usually played with in a two striker formation. Um, so but I do think that either Pavone or Legette can, I think they could kind of interchange if they did like a 4 2 3 1. And to be fair, Vanny does mix up his formations, but let's just say it's a 4 2 3 1. That's something he's played a bunch. Chicharito is obviously the one up top. Um, I think Legette and, uh, and uh, Pavone, if Pavone is signed, uh, either one can play right behind uh, Chicharito, the other one can play out wide. Um, you know, there's some flexibility there. Um, so that's what I think will probably happen. Um, I think there's a chance it could be a four, three, three, if it's a four, three, three, I don't think legit probably would be a wide forward, but I think that's actually a, a role he could play. He's played it with the national team and he's been really quite good at it. Um, but he's really, I don't think he's played it very much in MLS. So, you know, there's some combinations. And again, I think one of the things with Vanny is he's kind of a tactical, tactical chameleon he doesn't have one set formation. So he, he may, you know, try th some things out until he gets to something that he, he, he likes, but he did say when he got hired that he is planning to kind of implement one, you know, formation, one style to start and then branch out from there. So I expect that he's not going to be changing the formation game to game right off the bat. It's going to be something that takes some time, but yeah, again, I think it'll probably be something like a four, two, three, one, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I think I think it makes it interesting, right? I think uh, you know, just going on the legit uh, to your point, I think uh, it's going to come down to the type of formation, and you know, because we we see legit, he's getting like Greg Berhalter gets the best out of was legit, right? Obviously, you know, with uh, GBS last year with Game of Scoloto. Uh, at times, Legette looked good. He was scoring goals, but at times, you know, he wasn't. And I, and I don't know. Obviously, 2020 it was a crazy year. But um, we essentially kind of see Greg Berhalter really believes in Sebastian Legette. And I think at this point, Sebastian Legette is going to be, uh, 
uh, you know, key role for the, the men's national team, whether it's a starter off the bench, he, he I, he's on there, right? I don't know where, where he's going to land, but he's on there. He's a key role. And for a national team that, you know, has high expectations, you know, uh, at first it was a little surprising, but now that you, you see how much trust there's in between Sebastian Leggett, you know, I even asked Sebastian Leggett about, you know, so what, what, how, how is it, how different is it? Uh, from Greg Berhalter and Greg Vanny. And he talked about, you know, it's very similar. And, and, you know, I'm just paraphrasing here, but he, he mentioned that, you know, he feels excited that, it, that it's similar, that the U.S. men's national team style that they want him to play is similar that to LA Galaxy. So he doesn't really have to play out of position. He, he gets, he's going to be able to play the same, essentially the same position when he's with the LA Galaxy and when he's with the U.S. men's, men's national team. And I think you can only go up from there, right? And he's going to only be able to assist to your point, right? If, we, if that Greg Vanny has him an attacker, he's only going to be able to, you know, feed into Chichirito a lot better because he knows how to attack those gaps, where to put the ball, and you know where to read, read defenses. And he's he's going to get better from there. And I think that's that's not only Chicharito is going to benefit uh, the whole team, and we may see the best, also the best Sebastian Legit if all things go moving forward with him, and you know, and then he's going to be in and when a player goes in and out of the lineup. It, it does it does suck but if he's playing the same style he's not going to lose a beat and I, I think i think that's one of the the key pieces for sebastian legit if he plays the same role uh, you know the men's national team in la galaxy he's not going to miss a beat whether he goes there or, or comes back no absolutely not and he i think one of the things one of the reasons why he's played midfield so much is because he's one of the most versatile players american players out there but again i you know he's he's fine in midfield, but I think with the national team, we've seen how good he is as an attacker last year, he played more of an attacking role for the galaxy. I think that that kind of the proof is in the pudding, right? Like he was one of the few guys who actually looked halfway decent on a team that really had no attacking style. It was kind of a free for all. He kind of rose above the muck a little bit and, you know, it was halfway decent. So um, yeah, I am all for Sebastian Legit as an attacker. Let's uh you know, take the, take the training wheels off and, and see what he can do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, I think that's definitely another player we're, we're going to keep, I, at least I'm going to keep tracking and see how, you know, he performs uh, with both teams and, you know, you hope the best for him. Um, now let's, let's talk about Jonathan Dos Santos. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it, he talked about, you know, it's being his last year on his contract. And I, I have a quote here that I just want to read um, from JDS. He's a, I have high expectations this year. It's my last year on a contract. And like I've always said, I would love to stay here long term, but I know it's not up to me and how I, it's not up to, but I know it's up to me and how I do this year. This club deserves the best and I'm going to give them my all this year, end quote. Um, I think that's a very powerful quote. I think that that he obviously knows his situation. And typically when we see a player playing on his final year of the contract, you you see the best, right? You, you see him have a breakout year. You see him score goals. Um, the best year in his career, and I think this is this is his fourth year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, you know, at times it's been it's been it's been up and down uh, because of his injuries. But we know when he's when he's on, he's on. And I think that the biggest thing for him is being consistent, making sure he's able to play every game, um, and then obviously impacting the game, right? How he does with the Mexican national team, because we know once he once he plays with the Mexican national team, he's a whole different uh, Jonathan Los Santos, and I think that's one of those things that they're missing missing and that you really want to see him be able to control that midfield be able to be the captain right and be the captain of the team um and I, I'm very interested to see what type of season he has because I really feel like he has to have a breakout year like I'm talking about you know scoring goals assists uh like the team like you know like like the team depends on him and if, if he's gone for one game then you know you you can tell the difference right and I think that's the only way I could see as of right now that he, that I could see him ha- if he has a year like that he comes back but if he has another mediocre year I, I don't really think Jonathan Dos Santos comes back because you also got to think about you know that he has a D, he's a DP spot right he's not getting any younger right uh, and if he's if, he, if he's out with injuries is that a player you're, you're going to want to invest a DP spot? You want to invest millions of dollars? I don't really think so. So I, I think a lot, there's a lot of pressure on Jonathan Dos Santos, but I think he's he's going to be he's going to be able to handle it. And I just want to, I'm interested to see how his year goes for him. Yeah, I think you raised lots of good points. He obviously needs to stay healthy first and foremost. Um, I mean, you know, it's one thing to say, well, I'm in a contract year. I need to really like prove myself. And it's another thing to do it, but I think he was saying the right things. Like 
there's a lot of players who are on contract years who um, play out the contract, right? Like in soccer, it's not that unusual. You know, we see in other American sports, like it's my contract year. Like I really got to, you know, be lights out and then they get the contract and, you know, the old saw is, you know, then they kind of let, let off a little bit and don't perform as well after they sign the big deal in soccer. It's, it's not always that way. It's, it's more like, um, well, I only have a year left, so I just need to like get through it and then I can do whatever I want after this. And he's not saying it like that. He's saying, mm-hmm. well, no, this is a contract year. I got to like really step it up and um, show that, you know, I, I deserve the money I'm getting right now. And, you know, without saying it, I deserve money in the next one too, uh, which I think is the right attitude. Um, and I think, you know, the galaxy, I think can be kind of philosophical when it comes to Dos Santos, because if he plays great and then he goes out into the sunset, okay, they've uh, freed up a ton of money. Like you said, a DP spot, you know, that's something that they can go out and uh, kind of retool with their, their team. If he plays badly and he leaves, same thing. If he plays great and he wants to come back and they want to bring him back, then, you know, that's fine too. Like, I, I think that they can be pretty open-minded um, at his age, at his price point that, you know, we'll just see how this year goes and kind of go from there. And, and I don't necessarily think the Galaxy have to be really worried about if he has a great year and then takes off. Um, obviously, it won't be easy to replace a player like him, but you can just sort of see like, okay, how, how is this year going to go? We'll kind of take it from there, see what he wants. He may not really want to come back at all. Um, and if that's the case, then fine, you know, have a good year and then go out on good terms together. Um, so I, like I said, I think the galaxy can be kind of philosophical in terms of how they approach the aftermath of the season, you know, kind of regardless of how Dos Santos plays uh, this year, but obviously they want to get the best out of them this year. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I, I definitely feel like, uh, you know, the galaxy, like you said, can play, play how they want. Right. You know, he's, he's 30 years old. He's going to be 31 in March, uh, excuse me, in April, this, this next month. So it's like, all right, right now, LA Galaxy hold all the cards in it. You know, you know he is excited. He is an exciting player when he's on. He is he's a he's a very versatile player when he's on, and he very, he controls that midfield when he's on. You know, um, you know, it's just, it's just a consistency, and you know, I think it, it comes down to like you know, is you know, thir- thirty one years old. It's not you know next month. Uh, thirty one years old. It's not that old. But I think the biggest thing is, is those injuries. You know, is being injury prone. And, you know, we know in this league, 31 is not the same as 21 or 18 or 17, right? Uh, where the, where they can get those players. And, you know, and I'm interested to see because it, uh, from from what I've been seeing from Jonathan Dos Santos on Instagram, he looks like he really loves L.A. He really loves L.A. lifestyle. He really loves being there. You know, uh, he's really adapted uh, to live in to live in here. And I think, uh, you know, it's going to it's going to be it's going to take a lot more from from him than from the other guys, because I think the other guys, like like you said, they. They they able to be philosophical philosophical about it and, and see what happens, but they also can can see what else is out there, right? What what the options are out there? What what other young talent can we groom? What other players does Greg Vanny want to bring into the system? Because if we're talking right now, right, you know, Jonathan Dos Santos, Chicharito, and Christian Pavone, if we're gonna be straight up, those aren't Greg Vanny's players, right? Those aren't the players he not saying he doesn't want them, right? No, let me just be clear. Not saying he doesn't want them, not saying he 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 doesn't think they're talented at all, but you know those aren't the players that he recruited at uh, right now. And typically, when you have a new coach, you, you always see that he, you know he's going to have the option of you know getting a DP player, maybe one or two. But he's coming in with the same. Obviously, if contracts issues and everything happen, but I think uh, I think Greg Vanny may want to see what he can also get with that third DP spot and I think also want to see I'm curious to see what he can also bring in him and Dennis the close can bring in with that you know potential DP spot there as well yeah I didn't think of that I actually think uh probably Vanny is pinpointing like what he said with the six to eight players that they're targeting I'm guessing that's kind of where he wants to leave his mark of like okay I you know there's this these three guys I want to trade for if it's possible you know these three guys I want to sign from these leagues that kind of thing and I, cause in Toronto, he had a similar setup where uh, he was working with a GM or a sporting director. Um, there were expectations that the club needed to ha- sign big players and they did. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure that Vanny was the one like spearheading, you know, sign- going after particular players. I think he worked great with the DPs on the team. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, it's totally possible that he may be like, well, when we have a DP spot open, I know exactly who I want, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. let me know. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I get the sense. Uh, I don't know. I just have a hunch that it may be like, he's targeting kind of the next level of guys of like, here's who I want to get, you know, like I want to do a trade for this defender that everybody thinks is mediocre. And then I'm going to show everyone that this guy is like the real deal. Like, I think that's kind of what he, he really, like, I think that's probably where he, he really gets a kick out of, you know, building the roster and adding to the roster, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. And that, I mean, that, to be, to be honest, that's what he's going to have to work with this year. Uh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with, with the players that they, that they have. Uh, that's a lot of talent talking about, you know, Chicharito, Jonathan Santos, and potentially Christian Pavone. I mean, you're talking, and they're all, if they're all able to be healthy and everything, I mean, you, you got it. You got, you got, you got stars right there. So, you know, I, I may, I am interested, uh, you know, to see what he does with that 10 money because you, you know, uh, you, I think you can pay up to 600,000, six, 600. I think that's the tr- threshold, right? You have to, that's where it starts around 600,000. So it's not, a, it's not a cheap player. You can get a very talented player. Uh, and I think it, the max you can pay is like 1.25 for, 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 for a TAM player around there. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alicia. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's a, there's a lot of, I don't know how much TAM money they have or, or but you know that's always the question with these MLS teams. We don't know the the, the salaries and the financial things, right? But I think it's going to be in, very interesting to see the the type of players uh, he brings in um, to help with that, you know, with that midfield or the, or the wingers or the defense, or and also help up top with Chicharita. I think that's the thing that I'm more interested to see uh, who he, if he uh, you said he doesn't play four two two uh four four two excuse me um but i'm very interested in what pieces he, he brings in that w- the unknowns right the unknowns uh, i'm very curious to see what greg randy does with those yeah for sure i mean we've said they have a lot of talent and we're looking forward to seeing how they do but they also have a lot of holes on the roster and you know like we've been talking about players going out on national international duty you know dos santos potentially chicharito legit probably Araujo, possibly Klinsman, you know, right off the top of my head, that's potentially five starters that um, you're going to need to replace periodically throughout the season. And this is shaping up to be a very busy year on the international front. So even if some of those guys aren't necessarily like starting right off the bat, like you need to have a decent right back to, you know, be ready for when Araujo is out, you know, you need to have another good midfielder if Dos Santos is on international duty at Nations League or something like that. Um, and that's also an important thing, especially because I think there's this, I think the season's going to be pretty compressed again this year. So it's, it's going to be a lot of games again. Yeah. A lot of games, a lot of unexpected, you know, uh, travel back and forth and, you know, making sure your players stay healthy, which is, which is the most important thing. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a very tricky year for everybody, right? Because of how compressed all the schedules are. And, uh, you know, just, I'm very interested to see the, the guys also that step up, right? Because I think, I think some of the conversations I'm assuming he's having is, you know, we know a few spots, but there's also a lot of competition there. And who's going to step up, right? Who who are those going to be the unknowns of this year that you know, are going to have a breakout year? Um, because they, they also signed a lot of homegrown players as well, right? And I think that's what you're more interested in. I think that was also a, tr- a strategic point for the Yellow Galaxy because – we saw we see how many players uh, from 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 you know from the MLS from Texas from California are going straight to Europe and and Accenture Galaxy aren't getting any money from that and you know a lot of those homegrown uh, players that they sign you know are gonna want to you know get some time in and see how they mix in and maybe an Open Cup they get they may get more opportunities maybe obviously we talked about the, these international guys when they go up uh, other players are gonna be having you know chances to play for the first team. I'm very interested to see how he uses those homegrown players. Me too. Uh, they have a lot of homegrowns, but they have some players who are very exciting prospects. Uh, you know, guys that you, you know, really could be really good players. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see, like you said, how, how they're played. I certainly hope that one thing that Vanny does that I think is pretty unusual in MLS is he actually substitutes his defenders quite a bit. So if you see a player like, Marcus Fercranis, who's, you know, a central defender, he may get 10 minutes off the bench in, you know, a game that's the Galaxy are up 3-1. They feel like they're doing pretty well. Vanny's one of the few coaches who will actually take a central defender off, put another one on, freshen things up in the back. 
Um, you know, that's really pretty unusual to do. Yeah, central uh, defender, it, especially. He does it quite a bit. So I'm not saying necessarily if you're chasing a game, if it's a close game, you know, he's going to be chopping and changing, putting in 17 year olds, but um, he actually does de- rotate his defense and substitute his defense uh, defenders really fairly often. So um, I expect that'll happen. And so I expect the likes of for Jalen Neal, like, I think they're going to get some garbage time minutes. And at this point, you know, having a little bit of uh, USL experience, they'll probably play some USL too, but um, getting some garbage time minutes in MLS, I think is really useful for, for them. And so I, that's something that I think will be an innovation for him uh, that we, we haven't really seen by the galaxy before um, that, you know, could be useful for guys like that, just to get them their feet wet, get them used to the pace, the pace of play um, at this level, you know, slowly over time and in hopefully not super high leverage situations. Um, you know, that, that's something I'm expecting to happen. And, and I do think he's going to be playing the homegrowns more, but given that they need to get results, uh, I don't know beyond maybe one or two guys, if they're going to be playing a whole bunch of them a lot, but I, I do expect there'll be more minutes for homegrowns this year. Yeah, and I think obviously another thing to the homegrown players is right. That there's a lot of teams in Europe now scouting here, uh, here in the United States, here in California, right? And then <clears throat> you want to give those players those minutes, right? So they can, you know, you can also increase their value. But at the end of the day, you got to get results. If you're Greg Vanny, you got to you got to get results. And we're, I'm not sitting here that you know he's going to play everybody. But, but um, you know, to your point, <clears throat> you know, I haven't really watched as much Greg Vanny as you have. Um, you know, it's interesting if he'll sub in, you know, a uh, center, center defender, uh, come in for 10 minutes, right? If they're winning 3-1, obviously 3-1 is a big lead, but any, anything can happen. And I think those garbage mints are really going to be important for those homegrown players, right? To show them like, hey, you know, we want you here. There's a future here for, for you. And on the business side, hey, come, you know, we're playing him. He's getting some minutes here. Now give us five, $10 million, right? That's, that's, that's the hope, right? And that's the hope. And that's how the Elegaxi are able to, to win on both sides, right? The, the player gets a minute, the player, the player also gets shown to European teams and, and, you know, they get minutes, they make some money at the end of the, at the end of the day, right? That's, that's, what, that's the goal that will potentially happen. But I'm, I'm very interested um, who's going to step up this year. Who are this homegrowns is like, you know what? He may get a, a starting shot or he may be the first one off the bench, you know, because I think they, they're still going to have about uh, I think they're still going to have the same FIFA rules right? as the last year, five subs. Do you- I think so, but I need to check to make sure. But I, I believe they're going to do five subs again this season. Yeah, and, I, and I like that. I, I like that because, yeah. you know, three three subs is hard enough. But I think I hope they just stick with five subs. Um, that way, you know, a lot more players get in. I think it raises the level of competition. You, you got fresher players in. Um, so I hope that I hope they stick with that because we'll, we'll see a lot of the homegrown players hopefully this season play for the other galaxy. Um, now moving on to, to to Christian Pavone, right? Um, he uh, Greg Vanny was asked by uh, by uh, was it John Rojas about Christian Pavone. Um, you know, you know, he Greg Vanny one didn't shy away that Christian Pavone is still the guy. Uh, you know, he's still the guy. Um, and he talked about, you know, he, he, I know he mentioned, um, you know, that some deals are still, they're right at the edge. He, he kept using the word like right at the edge. We're right at the tippy point. You know, I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, um, but it's, it's interesting that, you know, he, he mentions that he's excited and that, you know, it's, I think he mentioned about like, it's been like two weeks. I think it was referring to the offer, um, you know, so Pavone's the guys right there, but he also mentioned, um, that if, if things don't go well, that they have to look at other options, you know, but I, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I think, I don't know. I wanted to ask him like, when is the cutoff? <laughs> right. When is the, but I don't know if that's a question for him or, or, you know, for Dennis to close in the front office, but, um, but I, I you know, let's, let's talk about that. Right. Christian Pavone being the guy, he talked about his surgery. He's obviously, he's aware about his surgery. So it's an interesting situation, a player that you're trying to get a player that had surgery by, you know, Argentinian doctors and not even your own doctors, you're aware of the situation. Um, but what, what do you make of his initial comments about Christian Pavone? Yeah, well, I mean, we figured that they had given uh, an offer to Boca Juniors and he confirmed it, right? He says there's an offer on the table and it's been sitting there for about a week. Um, like what's going on? Um, you know, by kind of transfer mill, you know, coverage, 
I mean, his comments were pretty mild, right? Like they weren't any sort of ultimatum or anything that you typically see in the South American press, but still he confirmed it. And he, he said, you know, oh, we're just waiting for them to get back to us and approve it finally, you know, so on and so forth. Um, he did mention, you know, if it doesn't work out, then we're gonna have to go elsewhere. I got the sense that their eggs are in this basket right now. Like they are not really looking elsewhere. Like this is the big one that they're going after. And I mean, given the reports, you know, he didn't confirm an amount or anything like that today, but the reports that we had had, you know, last week when we talked was uh, 10 million for 50% of his rights, you know, they don't, they can't afford to kind of splash the cash or, you know, really put themselves out there too hard with too many players. So it makes sense that they're going out, you know, all in kind of on, on Pavone. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just because the team wants it doesn't mean it's going to happen. So it, you know, the ball is really in Boca's court and we still have to see how they want to wrap this up. And like we, we talked about before, you know, Boca likes to make it really protracted and, and difficult. So we'll see. Yeah. And I have a quote. This is his actual quote. It's still a very open situation. It feels like it's right there. We remain, we remain optimistic that it can get pushed over the edge. At the same time, we also have to be considering what does life, what does life look like if we can't, but I'm still hopeful that we can get it done. Uh, end quote. Um, you know, those, those, those words, obviously, you know, all the eggs are in the basket of Pavone or Boca juniors, right. To get Pavone. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, like I said last, last week, Pavone's the number one, two, number one, two, and three guy at this point, unless something drastic happens and Boca's just like, no, we're not selling them. Then obviously they, they got to look elsewhere. But if we look at where we're at right now, we're March 1st, the season doesn't start till April 17th, right? That's like a month and a half. They still got, they still got more than enough time. Uh, I, I think once you start getting to like, I don't know, maybe at the end of March and you don't have, and you don't have the, I think by the end of this month, if you don't have the deal done, then okay. You, you start to get a little nervous. You start to, okay, when are you going to actually get this player, right? When are you going to get this done? But you, I think they still got till April 17th, but if you're the LA Galaxy, you want to get it done this month. I, I think this is a month that you want to get it done. Now, if Boca wants to, I don't I don't know. That's a whole other issue, what's going on uh, over there. But the other thing that, that was asked, uh, you know, Greg Vanny was also asked about, you know, the allegations about Christian Pavone. And he said, and this is your, this is your tweet, Alicia, that, that I'm reading off right here. He's like, I don't know the facts of, of the situation, so I don't have an opinion, end quote. So that, that to me just tells me, okay, he doesn't know and he doesn't want to comment, right? How, how did you take what he said about the allegations? Yeah, I thought it would, they were pretty strange. I thought his response was pretty strange, to be honest. Um, I think it's a, the kind of response that like a decade ago, a coach could have said and people would have been like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, we don't have the facts. You know, what are you going to say? I think now, um, you know, I understand probably what he was trying to say, which is, I don't, you know, I don't know the facts. So it's hard for me to make a conclusion based on that, which is true, but we've been in a lot of situations where, you know, nobody, <laughs> there's not going to be a videotape of, you know, what transpired, right? Like, <laughs> we're not going to find some kind of smoking gun to prove once and for all one way or the other to an extent. I think it would have been uh, maybe better if he had said, I don't know. So I have no comment um, just because I have no opinion on it. it. And then later on in his response, he said, but you know, as he's saying, well, I don't know for sure. I don't have an opinion. Um, but everything I've heard is he's a really great young man. Mm -hmm. And Again, I think if you really think he's exonerated and you don't think that he's done the sexual abuse that he's been accused of doing in Argentina, then that's fair. But he didn't say that. He didn't say, I don't believe he did it. Um, he said, well, I kind of like, I, I can't believe he, he would do that. Basically, you know, I've been told he's a great guy. So I kind of like, I, I don't think it's possible. And again, I think if you read it one way, it's a reasonable response. And I think if you read it in light of this day and age when we know that there are times when there are really great situations and there's not going to be a videotape giving us the world, all the proof that we need to determine a situation like this. And if he said, she said, um, 
and there's more people who decide to believe accusers than there used to be, you know, the burden of proof is not as high as it, you know, as it once was. I think in that light, the answer was um, lacking a little bit. So yeah, uh, look, I'm, I'm with you. I thought you had to know this question was coming. You know, yeah. that, that's that's my only critique about uh, Greg Vanny. Um, you know, it's, I, I think you you had to know that the Christian Pavone situation, uh, you know, it's, it's the elephant in the room, right? It's the it's, but the allegations is the elephant in the room. Not if you're going to get Christian Pavone, that, that's already out there. But I think the allegations, um, because we, one, we haven't even heard about LA Galaxy, right? It's not their player, but it is their player, right? This is the weird situation where the Galaxy are in, right? It's not their player, but it really is their player, um, you know? So it's like, I think, you know, I'm not, I don't want to speak for him, but I think it did. It, it was a little odd when uh, Greg Vanny responded that way because I, I was expecting um, – that, you know, you know, our front office or, you know, our, our team has been in contact with their team and, you yeah. know, and, and we're going off of what, what they're, what they're, what they're telling us or what they, what's been out there, right. What their legal team is. We're going off of what they're, they've done. We obviously, we don't know all the details, but we're going off of, you know, Pavone's uh, lawyers, you know, or something like that. I think that would have been easier, but to say you don't have an opinion when he's, the number one guy you're, you're trying to get, you know, it's, it makes it a little odd, right? It, may, it makes it a little odd. Is it, is it because, is it, is it, is it because you, you're not really in communication? Is it because the front office is, is dealing with that? Are you, are you obviously you just focus here on uh, what's going on? But I think that that response was, was, was not the response I think we were expecting. I think we're expecting like, you know what, we're aware of the situation. We take this very serious, but we've also been in contact with his lawyers. And, you know, off of the f- information that we know, we feel very comfortable to still be pursuing Christian Pavone. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that's a great point. Um, if they had said we've investigated it and we, you know, to our knowledge at this point, we don't think that there's any basis in it. Okay. Fair enough. Like, I, I mean, you know, they stand behind the player. Um, I think it's something that we're going to have to ask again and again until, you know, if Dennis Aclosa, if they sign him, like that's gotta be one of the big questions we ask because um, yeah, you're right. Like in, if they had said we've done an investigation or we're in the process of investigating it and we don't really think that there's merit to the claims, you know, okay. Then that makes sense that you're still pursuing him. But what if, you know, this investigation rolls on, you know, the legal investigation in Argentina rolls on and you are just taking at face value that you don't think there's a, it's a big deal. And what if it is a big deal? Like, you know, like that's a super embarrassing thing. Maybe Boca doesn't want to, you know, maybe they, you know, they, they don't want to take back the transfer if it's already gone through, you know, anything like, I mean, they could have a huge mess on their hands if, if there really was something behind the allegations, you know, so the ignorance, defense i think is that's why it's uh uncomfortable yeah it's it's and it, another thing right it, it didn't happen like yesterday it, this has been going on for like what like a month and a half now you know it's it's not like this is something new this is something that's been out in the open obviously maybe different because it's in a different country far away from us um you know uh, it's in argentina but i think because the galaxy haven't said anything the galaxy obviously no one has said anything because technically it's not their player technically right so they don't have to put out a statement but you are you one greg vanny said that you know this is the player that they're going for right um but i think it just would have been better like look we are aware of the situation we know what's going on we've talked with the legal team you know after talking with pavone's legal team and talking with him you know our front office we feel very comfortable and still pr- pursuing christian pavona that would have been it that would have been it but it makes it seem that maybe vanny doesn't really know what's going on maybe vanny hasn't been in conversation obviously with pavone maybe th- I don't know. I don't know who is it just Dennis the close who's, who's communicating with them. That makes sense. Right. Cause Dennis the close is the GM, but I think if this is your number one guy. This is your number one player. Imagine if that happened in the United States and he gave that response. Oh no. <laughs> Orlando city just had a player that they acquired. Exactly. Yep. Who was arrested for rape and they canceled the contract today. Um, he was arrested over the weekend and I mean, he's gone. Like they took action quickly. He's not been convicted but they took quick action about it. So, 
I mean, there are examples of, of teams, uh, even after they've signed a player, saying, okay, that was a mistake. Obviously, he doesn't have the character issues that we want. But it's a different story if you're pay paying $10 million for a player. You can't necessarily just be like, okay, we're canceling the contract and writing off that $10 million. <laughs> yeah, not at all. That it, you know, so again, it's that's why you have to kind of do the legwork ahead of time before the deal is done and, you know, feel like, okay, we, we feel 98% sure that, you know, he didn't do anything. This is, you know, he's on the up and up. This is not a problem before you shell out that money because that's yeah. a huge outlay. And, um, you know, it's going to give you more than one headache if, if it comes back to bite you later on. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that they don't have to say that he didn't do it. I think they just got to say that, look, we've spoken with the legal team and, and we feel comfortable. You know, that's all you got to say. You, we feel comfortable. I, I feel like that's that's all they had to say. But, you know, it's very, very interesting for Greg Vanny just to, to say that because I thought, you know, everything was great. Everything was great up, up until that response. And I don't know if we're, we're harping on it too much, but to your point, you know, Orlando City just let go of one of their guys because of the, you know, sexual harassment, or sexual assault case that happened. So <clears throat> I hope everything goes well for the Galaxy. Everything goes well for the Christian with Christian Pavone. But I kind of get the sense that I don't know if I don't know how much of their homework they've done with that response. That's that's the only feeling I get. Maybe maybe this is a question for Dennis to close. Right. That that may just be it, though. That may just be it. But like to your point, if you're giving out ten million dollars, I think everybody wants to know that hey, from the head coach to GM that we're on the same page. To, hey, this is what's going on. You know, because that, that question was coming. Uh, you know, that, that question was coming. And I think that just response was was just very odd to give, you know, just very, just very odd, you know, because it, it was coming. And I, I just don't know, um, you know, and he, he kind of just did save himself to a point. He said, you know, I've heard nothing but great things about the young man. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's kind of like what a college football coach says to, you know, excuse away some sort of allegation against a player. Well, you know, he's a great young man. And it's like, okay, but what, you know, like, <laughs> right otherwise, except for this one really bad thing he's done, you know, like, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a cliche. And so in that way, it was, um, like I said, it was the, like, tonally, it was a little bit odd. And, you know, again, I don't know, if the listeners may or may not uh, really be digging this, you know, deep uh, analysis for giving, you know, his words, but I definitely, like I said, I, I think, uh, if this pursuit continues, Dennis DeClosa is obviously going to be asked this question as well at some point, and he's going to have to answer it too. And, and, you know, if they sign him, the club will have to have some sort of response ready because it's at this point until, you know, an investigation is ended in Argentina. Uh, it's a worthy topic to discuss. So uh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. You, I think if, if they end up signing him, they, they have to come up with that statement because it's not going to go well if, you know, if they just sign them and don't say anything, they, they have to acknowledge it. You know, you know, if you're the LA Galaxy, one, you acknowledge it, you, you be the first one to put it out. You don't wait for someone to ask you a question. I think this is yeah. one of those things like you, you, you go, you go first, you, you got to go first. Don't wait for anybody to ask you questions. Once you put out your statement, once you, you caught, you know, cross your T's dotted your eyes, then let the questions come because then you and the organization know what what you're gonna say right not yeah. you know you're, you're prepared and it just didn't seem that he was he was prepared to answer that question um you know for being the, the number one guy which they're gonna dish out 10 million dollars you know which been, was has been confirmed you know from Pavone's dad um you know it's 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 uh, I just hope that they have everything because you don't you don't want this situation happening in the United States and you know, it's going to get very messy. So I think, I think they, they just got to, they just got to regroup. They just yep. got to regroup and be all on the same page because if this happens, you know, those questions are going to be asking you, you got to be better prepared for those questions. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, I just think it's, uh, I, I hope they actually get the situation done this month. I, I just, I just hope they, 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 get, they get it done and, you know, you know, just to under, see how the team's going to look and see, um, what what are going to be the missing pieces? Because if you don't get Christian Pavone, then you're going to have to look elsewhere. So we'll see what happens. But uh, Alicia, that's all the time we have. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we let you go? No, like I said, it's uh, it's exciting. We're finally starting the 2021 season um, in a sense. So uh, yeah, it's uh, long overdue. I was getting pretty antsy without any soccer. So it's it's good to 
to be kind of easing into things a little bit. We still got six weeks, but uh, we're easing into the, you know, into the start of things. And there's going to be a lot more news coming, which I'm also welcoming very much. Yeah. Yeah. And actually we may get to see, uh, well, I should also mention galaxy have a, you know, preseason matchup, uh, March 20th with San Diego loyal. So we'll, we'll see if they'll let media in. It's not open to the public. Um, you know, you got also got Landon Donovan, you know, as a, I think he's still their head coach, right? Yep. He's, he's still their head coach. So coming back and, you know, facing, he, did he play with Greg Vanny? Did he, did Landon Donovan or no? Uh, I don't think so, okay. but, uh, San Diego, you know, they're not an MLS team, but they have really been signing a lot of uh, top players for the USL championship. So um, I think they'll give them a, a, a pretty good game in, in preseason. Yeah. And I think Donovan also mentioned that he wanted to be considered for the head coaching job of the, of the LA Galaxy when it was open. But I think that that may have been may have been a long shot. But yeah, you're going to have two former LA Galaxy uh, players, you know, coaching against each other. So that's exciting. Um, well, Alicia, let the people know where they can follow you. Sure. You can find my work on the galaxy at lagconfidential.com and you can find me on Twitter at soccer musings. Yeah, guys, give her a follow. If you don't really don't follow her, you guys can follow me at Joe Garcia LA on Twitter. Make sure to follow us on uh, LA soccer hub on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to give this a five-star rating on Apple podcast. You can also listen to this podcast on Spotify, wherever you get your music.